So the main difference between today's video and some of the bizarro random cooling experiments that Alex and I have done over the last several months is that this time we're not in the boardroom, we're in the kitchen because today's video is gonna be completely nuts. Now, I showed you guys Sub-Zero cooling on Threadripper Gen 1 with my own DIY water chiller. But believe it or not, there's actually a commercially available all in one nice tidy little package version of that. So we're gonna be taking this water chiller from Active Aqua and we're gonna be hooking it up to Thread Ripper 2. 32 cores of Sub Zero. Have they gone mad? Have we? No, it seems fine. Seems perfectly fine. Origin PC's EVO 15S is under an inch thick and features a smooth 144Hz 1080p display with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 Max-Q graphics card. Check it and their latest deals out by clicking the link below. Okay, so uh, first order of business is make sure all of our hardware actually works. Yeah. Okay, so do, do I get to unbox the chiller? <laughs> sure, yeah, go for it. One tenth of a horsepower. I could get into that. That seems like a good thing. I guess so. Whoa, what the f What? You said I could unbox it. And then you literally moved immediately to the scissors and immediately started unboxing it without me. Well, you're wasting would a I, lot of time right here. Would so. I get to unbox the tubing? I guess Fine. so, yeah. You know what, I'm not gonna do that then. You do it yourself. There you go, here's Alex's first unboxing. I'm not even helping him. All right, so we've got some fittings here. They look Boring. fine. Bore, bore, ow! <laughs> Damn it, that's heavy! Well, that's more than you need to know. So, power cord, it's a heavy power cord. And we've got the chiller here, which normally you'd flip around, but you can't flip around chillers, so. You've got your back to the audience. You're failing right now. You're failing. Okay, so hold on. This has a compressor in it, right? So yep. we don't want to tip it yeah. over. That's what I was just saying. Oh, well, it wasn't clear. Um, do you want to grab an end? Okay. Wow, that is a lot more compact than the one that I made out of a window-mounted AC unit. Um, recommended water reservoir size, 13 to 50 gallons. Okay, and what is this for? It's for chilling aquariums. Oh, okay. So it's designed for a continuous load, so that's yeah. good. We considered in advance that these are fittings that we probably don't have already, right? Right. Oh, good work. Or did that come in the box? Yeah, you you box. thought of nothing. No, I looked at the thing and... Well, maybe the audience would know about all the things that are on the box if maybe you told them during the unboxing <laughs> I experience. Did. The Terrible. first thing that I said was there are fittings. Yes, is that the right size for this? No. Yes. yes. All right, fine. Yeah, and I figured that this can go between this and the pump and then we can put it into okay. good stuff between here and Did there. Did we buy a pump? Yes. You know we have lots of pumps, right? Yep. But this one has more <laughs> gallons per hour or whatever the measurement is. Really? Than the little giants? Well, I don't you know didn't what the little look. giants are, but... You don't know what the little giants are. No. Uh, hold on, can we still return this? Is this still in like new condition? Yeah. I'm gonna go get a little giant. <laughs> Trust me, you'll like my little giant. See, that is a real man's pump. It'll give you lots of head pressure. Guessing zip ties are more than good enough? Uh, yeah, zip ties fine. Okay, here, I can do that if you wanna get the next one going. So for the res reservoir, I was kind of thinking, instead of bothering with doing a whole lot, we could just stick the tubes right into here and duct tape it on. Okay. I mean, the most important thing when you're going sub-zero with some kind of alcohol-based coolant is making sure that any plastics that you're using are not going to get destroyed by it, any seals or gaskets. This is that new MSI board, the Creation. Um, do we want to use this one or the Zenith that already has all the residue and crap all over it? Apparently the VRMs on that one are better for Threadripper too. Ah, well, this is just the first test, so let's just kind of see what happens and go from there. Cool. Here goes nothing. Uh, can I have some fittings for the block here? Thanks. We can probably just like goatsy stretch a 3 8 inch over there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yep. You got it? Oh, it doesn't have to go on. Oh, we're never going to get that off. <laughs> well. 
I guess, do we just turn the pump on now and make sure or hope that nothing leaks? That's kind of what I was planning to do. All right. To those watching at home, the worst part of all of this is that this loop will perform significantly better than yours. Okay. I'll try not to drink um, windshield de-icer here. Okay. The pump is now primed. Cool. Is this uh, thing broken? Your little giant's really impressing me. Fortunately, I have another. <laughs> we could have had this running by now. This one's even bigger. Oh, great. Yeah, this is the big giant. Oh, now I wish we'd left a little more slack on the lines. <laughs> Let's do a quick tubing swap here. Okay. Perfect. Dang it, Alex. How do I avoid drinking windshield de-icer now? Ooh, man, yeah, that's... <laughs> that's what I told you. There Yay. we go. Okay, so hold on. So right, this. Okay, perfect. Should be fine. And we're not gonna put that on so tight this time. Okay. Good to go? Uh, Hopefully. Let's hope. Power it on. <laughs> Aha! Success, TM. <laughs> Seems to be working. Okay, so now what? I guess we should just fire up the bench. Boom! Let's do it! Oh, and it turned off. That's okay, it's probably just the classic double post. So our system's already not posting, that's a good sign. You know what, I'm gonna start unwrapping the Zenith. <laughs> All right. I don't actually know that that's the problem, it's probably not, but. Oh, I'm gonna go get some water, because I'm thirsty. Go ahead and cut. Hey, it booted up on like the fourth attempt. Oh, and it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good job. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying the other board. Oh, wow, that is a lot of. I might have overdone the thermal compound a little bit there. It's just like Vaseline caked around the RAM. Very poor quality Vaseline, by the way. If you've never installed a Threadripper CPU before, it's like nerve wracking, actually, the way you gotta go at it. Like if it didn't have a little torque stop, I don't think I'd put it that tight. See that flicker on the RGB lighting? I don't think it is the GPU. If we just lost a 2990WX, I'm gonna be pretty choked. Yeah, that would suck. Like, is that how it's supposed to go? Let's just, let's just go for it again. Maybe it's the RAM. Some days I feel really bad for the viewers at home. It's like they're watching a horror movie. No! Don't go into that closet. Why would you do that? Everyone else who went in there died. Ooh. Okay, so it's just a bad mount. All good. Let's see if we get a post here. How oh, is that there's even a possible? code right here. Um, detect memory. All right, do you want me to grab some other stuff? Yeah. I figured out the problem. What was it? Old BIOS. Uh, we need a Threadripper one. We need a USB drive. Uh, can we just use the other board? At this point, I think it's faster to flash the BIOS. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. All right, well, there's a bunch of RAM. Yeah, thanks. So we're an hour in, and we have not yet booted Threadripper 2 to verify that our system does in fact work. But, we have the latest BIOS on our board now. Theoretically, this is it. I'm um, wait for it. They don't put postcodes in the manual anymore. <laughs> I have confidence that this time we will post. There Aha! <laughs> I mean, we've achieved nothing because we still can't boot. Okay, do you wanna run and grab the drive off my bench? All right, okay, that's a good sign, actually. <laughs> okay, and that noise is driving me knocking futz right now. All right, so change graph to logical processors. LOL, so many CPUs. So I've just gotta put some GPU drivers on here still. We've got Ryzen Master Software, and Alex has pulled out the thermal camera. 
So right now our CPU is sitting at about 45 degrees because it's had a considerable amount of time to warm up. Like these tubes are warm to the touch. So I think now is the time for us to turn this thing on. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Well, this is somewhat anticlimactic. Where is it so even taking the temperature from? I guess. Oh, that did something. 39, that's the limit. Four Celsius, I Four guess. Four Celsius. So how, how do we want to use this? Do we want to use it in a way that's practical to just chill water down to a little above the dew point and say, okay, this is the best case scenario for you know, normal water cooling performance, or do we want it like, like chilled? I think we should do chilled. Okay. Like we've already screwed up that motherboard. So what do we have to lose besides time? The CPU. We have another one. The RAM. We have more. We'd never recommend that anyone run below ambient or below the dew point on an ongoing basis without protection. But uh, I mean, we're just doing a Threadripper 2 ex overclocking experiment, so. Where's that shop towel stuff you had? We'll just put some of this around the socket. This is a really bad idea. Seemed like a pro insulation job. Oh boy. Uh, even with all this airflow over the CPU socket area and the VRMs, our block is still. That's, that's pretty wet. Sweating. But on the plus side, our CPU is idling at what, five degrees? Seven? Uh, yeah, seven. Why does this just say overload watts? Oh, well, it's oh, like here the we max. Go. Yeah, I'm here just... we go. Okay, uh, go ahead and hit it. Oh, I just did. Oh, you did? Is it done? Yep. What the hell? Yeah, what? it was a pretty low score too, 4864. So we're at about 100 watts at idle. Can you hit it again? I wanna see what we peak at. Sure. Whoa, 335 watts while Cinebenching. Okay, so we got just over 5,000 Cinebench, which is about what we expect. So that means our CPU is doing 250 watts already. We haven't even overclocked it. It hit a maximum of 24 degrees. <laughs> so what, you want 40? Yeah, let's go for 40. There. Oh, it's changing a lot of variables at once. So we're at, whoa, we're idling at 140 watts now. All right, I'm gonna hit it now. 540! 580! Ooh! Did we crash? No, 6,229 Cinebench. <laughs> that was too easy. <laughs> this CPU is sucking over 500 watts. What the hell? Who does AMD think they are? Intel? Maximum of 39 degrees. <laughs> well, should we try and go faster? I guess so. So I tried to launch Adobe Premiere and it just turned off. Yeah, I don't know if we're stable. There is a lot of water on there. Should, should we cut the power to this? Let's, let's do that. It's possible that there's water on the underside. Hard to say. Yeah, we could, we could pull that up and have a look at it. Actually, no, it's bone dry. It's really wet in there. So we might have killed our chip. Um, if we don't manage to revive it, then this is the end of the video. And we're back to life. How long, how many hours did we leave it for? It was fine after like three or so. Yeah, okay, fantastic. So we're not gonna go quite so low again. We're at 59 freedom units, whatever that is. And uh, there's, there's good news though. What do we got? So it's currently at 4.1, didn't change the voltage. It, I guess it's just fine, maybe. Uh, we're at 19 degrees idle now, which is a lot more reasonable at this room temperature. And have we done a stress test yet? Uh, no. Okay, start with Cinebench. Sure. Over 6,000. Should we try for 4.2? Update and restart. Oh, there are updates. Okay, well, why don't we do that first? Oh, uh, this might be a while. Oh. 
it seems like a lot of the issue was just that your crappy SSD died. It might have not even been the condensation. Oh. I mean, honestly, I don't think we really need to run any more benchmarks to determine that this works really well. Yeah. So the main takeaways here are that this is really compact, cools really well, and I'm gonna turn off the stupid pump. Without the noise from the pump and that industrial fan. Well, it's not on right now, but. We can get it to kick on though. Here, you wanna just, yeah. Set it at least four degrees lower and then it should kick in. That's actually not too bad. Yeah, it's really not loud. So let us know in the comments, would you like to see this cannibalized and integrated into a system? That's a really loaded question. <laughs> I sure would. <laughs> Are you on my team? Now let's go back in time and hear from our sponsor. FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the small business accounting software that's custom built for how you wanna work. If you're a freelancer or you run your own business, it's the simple way to be more productive, more organized, and to get paid faster. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks to get paid up to four days faster. You can see when your client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games, and you can take the whole experience with you on the go with their Android and iOS apps. So go try it out for 30 days for free at freshbooks.com slash tech tips. Then enter Linus tech tips in the how did you hear about us section. So thanks for watching guys. If you just like this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like the one I'm wearing and our community forum, which you should totally join.